And who taught you about words, about text, about uh, there was, there was, there was, was that autodictat, or was that? No, there was, there was all the guys who were here. The, 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 the you know, the, 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 the Nicholas Pennells, the Brian Bedfords, the Hirsches, the Langhams, particularly. Look at the text. Look at the text. Look at the text. The, the memories of Douglas Rain. He had been uh, head of the theater school when I had auditioned. And did you learn just by listening to them, or did they actually say, "Call him, call him, miss this. What about this?" I mean, how did what that? What are you work? doing? Oh, what that? are you? Okay. What? What do you mean? I mean this. No, you don't. You couldn't possibly mean that. Or that doesn't mean that. Or, even better, I tried that in 67. Didn't work. Don't do that. Try this. Or go ahead, try it. But you see why it doesn't work? It doesn't work because of this. Because the next phrase is that, and the next phrase is that. And you, okay, okay. Read the score, read the score, read the score. What Langham, what Hirsch were always on about was, therein lies the music and all the direction you'll need. David William, too. It's all there for you. Just learn to find it. And of course, that it takes a little bit of doing. So I started doing all that work. But more importantly, in 1983, the summer of 83, when I did Langham's Young Company, he cast me as Claudio. He hired mentor actors. Measure for measure. No, nope. uh, Claudio in uh, Machu Do. Right. And also Love's Labor's Lost, one of the two Love's Labors I did with him, one of the three Love's Labors I've done to date. And Claudio is a young man, a young man you know, who has his, his mentor and friend, uh, who, who, who leads him slightly astray, uh, but whom he trusts absolutely. And this was played, in my case, by John Franklin Robbins, a great, uh, a great actor and a great teacher, who Michael had picked up as he swung through New York with an All's Well RSC production. That's the kind of chap I need. He's going to help me train my people. He also hired John Neville. John Franklin and John Neville were very different actors. Neville, glamour, elegance, animal magnetism, and Franklin Robbins, meticulous, particular, uh, specific. And what they did in the other play was play Don Armado and Holofernes which has left me for life with a desire to be both those people. Schizophrenic. I'm trying to actually find a I remember both of them. where I can play both parts in the same production. I'm sure it can be done. I'm not just sure how, but I want to do it. He draws out the thread of his verbosity finer than the staple of his argument. I was going to say what's left to play after Lear and everyone else, and that's what's left Oh, there's to lots play. to do. Lots to do. But what, what happened to me was John Franklin and I were standing by to go on stage at the Tom Patterson Theater newly organized to accommodate Michael's idea of a young company. The ticket prices were, were according to what he thought our value was, that is to say, not much. So tickets were $10. Because he said, I can't charge much to have people watch you learn how to do Shakespeare. It's not, it's not, not done. When you get to the big house again, once I've polished the rough edges off, then maybe we can charge proper money, but not here. So we all thought, oh, OK, fine, we're, we're determined. And I was coming to the altar to reject Hero as Claudius discovers that he's betrayed her, uh, he's betrayed by her, and he comes to say, uh, you know, give not this rotten orange to your friend. And it was a very emotional scene. And sometime during the run, I finally got it. I, you know, we'd been doing it for weeks and weeks. We'd rehearsed it forever. A lot of intelligent, smart people helping out. <coughs> and I thought, yeah, yeah, I'm good. I look elegant in the clothes. It's going to be fine. And this one day, I just thought, you know what? This is a terrible thing to do to somebody. He's, I, I'm just behaving like a fucking asshole. I, I, you know, this is wrong. It's just wrong what I'm doing. And, 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 and I, I, I can't do it anymore. And we were standing by at the entrance. And the red light was on. And I said, John, I'm terribly sorry. Please apologize to Michael for me. But I can't do this. I, 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 just, I, I just can't do it. I, 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 don't, I don't know how to explain it to you. I just, and I guess I was in some kind of crisis. I just suddenly saw the truth of the situation and thought, this is a really shitty way to behave. No, no, I'm not doing this. I, maybe this I'm not supposed to be an actor. This is over. 
And so, you know, I was breathing, probably a little too shallowly, uh, and, and feeling very peculiar. And Franklin Robbins grabbed me by the scruff of the collar, and he said, huh, that's the way you're supposed to feel. And he pushed me on stage, through the curtain, to face Diana Feirazel, who was playing Hero. And I kind of tripped up the stairs and went, oh, fuck. Um, there's John Neville. This isn't going to be a good day for him when I tell him what I have to tell him. Is it? And, I, and I suddenly got it. I went, oh, so this is what acting is supposed to be like. I'm supposed to do all that work. I'm supposed to plan it out. I'm supposed to sort of skirt around the truth of these situations and then really actually try to put myself in one and see what happens to my heart, what happens to my breath, what happens to my thinking, and if I can cope, and if I can cope in front of a crowd. I thought, if I get through this, I'll keep going. 